Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Welcome to the Young Chat. Is this not <laughs> so official? <laughs> you guys. You put two Leos in front of a camera with a ring light. We're going to be here all day. This is a 15 hour <laughs> 15 hours. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Umcast. Welcome to the Umcast. I'm Vicky. I'm Michelle. This is the Uncensored Moms podcast. And we're moms, but you don't have to be. Mm -mm. You can just be uncensored. We encourage you to be uncensored. We Always. believe that everybody has the potential to be uncensored. You do. And not everyone's going to like to hear what you have to say when you're uncensored. Oh, but I think the trick is um, what we need to always be working on is not caring what people right. like and don't like. Right. Oh, I had a thought about this. I did too. Oh, can I go first? Please. Okay, cool. Please. So I was thinking that like if I made an invention, right? And mm -hmm. for me, it felt like absolutely gotta have this invention it's gonna change my life right yeah but it's not not everyone is gonna like this invention but i bet you there's like a few million people out Someone there would. that would be like me and that's enough y'all right that's enough the goal is not to change everyone's mind mm -hmm. or to get everyone to like you or to get everyone to want your invention but if you can connect with some right and, and the, change people's lives and those some, are your people those are your people we don't have to be the same. No. But we just got to love each other. And respect each other. And respect each other. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, <sighs> we're just like jumping right into it. And I feel like maybe we should see how you're doing first. Okay. So I'll tell you how I'm doing. Okay. And then, I'll, and then you tell me how you're doing. Okay. Is that what we do? Yeah. That's what we do. Um, so I will say first, I was thinking about how like before, back when we were more um, efficient, active, pro podcasters we mm -hmm. would be like every week friday you're you can expect a new little episode in your feed we should work towards some kind of consistency i'm thinking yeah well i think last time we said if we could do it every other week even is that it's thing? better than two years hey so we're our, we're aiming low i think it's been about so two we weeks don't disappoint ourselves it, i have it's been three weeks because i was oh, gone that's no, right it might even have been yeah it's been a while it's been a while, but you know what? Last time we recorded, for those that were tuning in, you um, have an update that you need to share with us. I do. I do. So last time we talked about how I went and got a mammogram, and they found a little something, a big something, and then I had to go How back. big was it? They don't tell you. Oh. But they measured it like at least 10 times, and I was like, you got that measurement? Oh, man. Um, I had to go back in for a biopsy it's a choice you can do a biopsy or you can just watch it for years and I was like no I'm gonna need to know immediately yeah. what that is went in for the biopsy and that was on Tuesday that was a whole week ago and how did what do they do for a biopsy dude do they numb your boob they numb your boob but the cool thing is you can watch it on the screen well I was able to watch it on the screen while they were doing it so I can literally see the needle going into my breast tissue and like moving around oh yeah. and I was like oh wow but you couldn't feel anything no I really couldn't feel anything like I I felt a little you know how like when they numb your teeth at the dentist and it's like kind of like a a, a ringing sting it's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of felt like that in my boob just mm -hmm. for a sec but just for a second mm -hmm. and and she was really really great and then and then she did a lot of other stuff. She didn't tell me when she cut into my boob, but she must have at some point because there's a hole there. Now it's it's healed, I'm sure now. Okay. But um, yeah, so she goes in like multiple times and then she goes, okay, so when, kind of like when you get a pap smear and you hear like a click with the, the plastic oh, thing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. This one's lou a louder click and it goes twice. So it's like, it's like, but it's louder than that. I can't make the sound. And she's like, so when you hear that, it's okay. Don't worry, that's what we're doing. So I can see this like flat thing going into my breasts and it's like, and, and she has pressure here the whole time. So you, it doesn't really hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. Actually, it kind of feels like a massage. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I know. I know. She laughed at I me. I feel like a uh, massage when a needle goes into my her, breast. I was like, I don't know. It's kind of enjoyable. Okay. Well, but I do love a, a boob massage just in general. Could be that. I don't think I've had one. Well, I just mean like, I love any kind of boob action. Okay. Any touching of my boobs, it's I'm more ready than to not. go. Okay, ready to go. Gotcha. Yeah, good to know. Uh huh. Um, and she was cute too. Okay, you're like, you know, take your time. Take your. So we'll stay here all day. Um, <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> so she goes in and you hear this, she goes, okay, three, two, one. And it's like, like, so, it's so loud. I just can't do it. And she did it. I know. Why can't I make a video? Oh yeah. Is that kind of it? Louder. Oh, like, gosh. it's like, it's like popping. Okay. Anyway, she did it four times. Oh, wow. Pulls it like she does it. Clicks, so pulls it. On she's the like screen, extracting. Can stuff. you see the lump in? Oh no, yeah, yeah. You can see the lump, and you can see her going in and like pulling stuff up, and then going away, and then coming back. Oh my gosh! I know. It was. It was. It was Were you like serious. so? I'm. Are you like? Am I looking at cancer? Is that? So I was. I was just. I no. I don't. I don't. I'm a very positive person. So I just lay there. I'm really comfortable. I have a little pillow under me, and I'm just like. If I feel any kind of like anxiety, I just close my eyes and I breathe deeply and I say to myself, and I do this all the time. Anytime I feel scared or nervous, I just think safe and calm. Wow. Safe and calm. And it works. Safe and calm. Um, so I did that every now and then, but um, so it gets happens. cancer, but you know, it worked in the moment. <laughs> Guess what? It's not. I don't have cancer. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. And you know what's so funny is that. I did it on Tuesday, and she's like, you'll, ha you'll have the results by Friday. We'll give you a call. On Wednesday morning, I got a, like, message in my um, scripts little, like, portal mm -hmm. on my phone, my app, and it's like, we looked at your results. Hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. We looked at your results, and this is a benign, it's like a fibro, a I don't know, some long word. It's a benign tumor. It lives in my body. It might go away. It might not. Don't you worry. Have a great week. But it is a tumor. I think it is. Yeah, I think they call it. I, I should look it up. Let's look it up. Yes, please. But it is. It but is, here's the thing. Even benign fine. tumors, as we've learned, like fortunately, it's sitting in a place that it's okay to be a, a benign tumor there. Right. It's you not know? going it's to cause. It's not in like Werner's brain. That's right. That's going to cause deafness and dizziness that's exactly so you have to remove it but much less of but an it's ordeal like, it's like where's your body gonna grow i bet there's they're all over they're us they're just all over she says the diagnosis listed is fibro adenoma which is a non-cancerous mm -hmm. breast tumor <gasps> and that's what you I have. have a breast tumor that's right it's right here. Oh, lumpy. How big did it look in comparison to like your boob on it the It looks like, a, it looks like about, it looks like that big. But of course that's on the ultrasound. For those that are right? listening, maybe like two centimeters. Oh, this is a podcast. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Wow. Maybe like three centimeters. But, but I bet it's smaller than that because. Can you feel it? No, I can't feel it at oh. all. No, when they push on it, it does feel sore in that area. Um. But no, uh -uh. and it could get bigger also. I I was googling, and Google says it can it can move and change and just I don't know. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I'm not worried about it though. That's that's hey. that's the takeaway. And the more you know, right? Because she said, yeah. well, first of all, the doctor's like, you don't need a mammogram. But good thing you did, because you found something. Yeah. And they're like, you could just you could do something or not. It's good to know. What's kind of crazy is that I I cried after I got in my car and I'm sure there were tears of relief, but I didn't feel relief. What I felt mostly was just like fucking gratitude. Like so grateful for this amazing facility, the amazing doctors, the amazing nurses, like just the ability to be able to go in for an hour, get that done, and then just know. Like, I was just so yes. grateful, and so, yeah, I, I'm glad I did it, ultimately, regardless. Yes, I'm glad you're okay. And it was kind of a cool experience. It kind of felt like, I'm, like, this is, part, this is like, part of your story. Like, whenever you have hard times, and I, I've thought this a lot as I've experienced things, like, not in a happy way, but like it is, it is forming your story, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like it, it does become a part of you and it like gets into like the filing cabinet of like your experiences. And I don't know. I just really like that kind of shit. And I think even more now when you're like in this cycle of parenthood of just day in, day out routines with children. Yeah. These things kind of stick out a little more too. Yeah. Of Oh, this is. This is not a random Tuesday. I'm gonna go like <laughs> look inside my body and yeah, and it, yeah, and it's like your story, mm -hmm. right? It's like not your kid's story or your right. husband's story, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm fine. Thank you. For oh asking. wow. How are you doing? 
I'm doing good. Um, I just uh, had my 36th year of That's life right. celebration. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm officially on the uh, other side of the mid 30s. Yeah. Careening yeah. towards my 40s. Well, you're going to love it because it's great. I hear that. Yeah, I really like it. I think when you can get us over the, at least for me, it just sounds weird to think 40 and me because I always think 27 and me. Me too. Right? I still think 27 and me. So yeah. don't worry about it. Okay. It doesn't matter, I don't think. But going from 20s to 30s was really great. Like being in my 30s is so much more enjoyable than my 20s. So I can only imagine 40s is probably. It just keeps going, yeah. Keeps getting better. Well, because you feel like you know more, you don't give a shit as much and it's just like yeah I'm just gonna be me I'm just gonna live my life I hear sex is better too at 40 well I mean I'm a big fan of sex I love it so much it's certainly better in my 30s than 20s yeah oh yeah I, I think honestly I think my experience with sex is uniquely lucky in that I've always had good sex mm -hmm. um but again, I think we've talked about this before, but it's been a while now. But I think the reason I was always enjoying sex is because I masturbated a lot as mm -hmm. a young person. And you knew what you liked. And I knew what I wanted. I knew what it was supposed to feel like. And I knew what I was there for. Like, I was not there. Like, I didn't. You cool. weren't there to be a whole. Congratulations, you got an orgasm, but um, and that's nice for you. Right. But but this is about me. Right. <laughs> You're not there as a vessel to jerk off this man's penis. Absolutely not. It like never even occurred to me. Right. But here's the thing: I don't think enough women are as confident as you to say that. Even if they know what they like, it takes a certain. You have to like get to a place of being confident enough with yourself to then say those words out loud and have a partner who's willing to hear them too. It's probably true, but again, I, well, and this is because I had, I was in a relationship for almost 10 years, so mm -hmm. I've only had sex with two people. That's right. So, you know. That's right. If you have sex with one person for 10 years and you started when you were like, well, I was 19 when I had sex the first time, but like we were together since we were 17, mm -hmm. like, you know, you kind of are just figuring it out together and, and yeah, I will say like as a Leo, like I am very like is not the word but like you know like assertive. yeah like I'm definitely like loud and assertive yes. and I can tell you people what I think and what I want and so that helps I'm sure but I think having that long ex long ex relationship mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah it must have helped it has to because Werner and I have been together now for 11 years and sex was always good with him but it's so much better Keeps now better. it's so much better now because I can actually I think when I met him, I didn't even, I didn't know what, how to make sex that much more enjoyable for me. Yeah. It was just like, what do I look like right now? I was too thinking too much of like, what do I look like? Is he feeling good? Does he like this way? And it was all about like him. him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he would ask like, does this feel good for you? And it's like, mm -hmm, yeah, it feels good. Um, doesn't feel bad. Or it felt like, or it was like, am I taking too long to come myself? And like, is it taking too, you know? And there's like too yeah. many thoughts going on. Well, I think that's common. I don't think, and I, I don't think it's unique just to women. I think men are thinking. Now I'm like, you're going to wait as long as it takes. And I, it's like, it doesn't even. That's not, the, we're going to change positions and we're going to try it that way. Right. We're do that. But yeah. most of the time it's like, I know exactly what I like. So I'll just do that and we're done in three minutes and it's fine. Dude, long sex, why? <laughs> Why long sex? Like, I remember when Brian and I first met, and he was, like, totally thought, like, yeah, the longer I go, the more masculine it is. And I kept, and I had had a ton of, you know, obviously, like, I, you know, and I was thinking in my head, and he had had a lot of sex, but just with tons of different people. Mm -hmm. Like, he had only had really short relationships, yeah. so he was just, like, same with Brennan. Mm -hmm. Sex and bye, right? Yeah. So you're not learning anything about these people. No. And so when he was, like, I'm, like, well, I mean, I just. Okay, I guess we're gonna keep doing this all day, but like, I, can we? I I'd love to go to sleep at some point. I think short sex is great. However, like, if I'm done, then I'm done. Meaning, I don't want it to be short where you're done in two minutes, and now I don't have a hard penis that I wanted. So longer. I don't mind that. Um, so he always he always waits till I finish first. Oh, that's nice. And if that's three minutes, great. And then it's like. Okay, I'm done. So like, let's let's let's. So can you just 
that's <laughs> Um, so I would say, I don't, we don't have, I don't know what happens. I have to think about this, but like I often, if, if I don't come because I don't, sometimes it's like, I, I, I like it. Like I like different things than he likes. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have fun his way and then he'll come and then I'll be like, and then he'll be like, okay, your turn. And then he's like all about me. Okay. How, what, with whatever. But if his penis is no longer hard. Oh, he's he's probably he's not using his penis at that okay. point. He's using other Which other is wonderful and fine too, but sometimes I just want a rock hard penis with my Who vibrator. Doesn't? Who doesn't? And right. So <laughs> Who doesn't? doesn't? So but yes. I will say I I don't have a vibrator. I've never owned a vibrator. And we talked about this before too. We did, and yeah. you still haven't I still haven't jumped on the bandwagon. I mean I can. I could, but honestly, That's your homework. like I think it's your homework. Okay. I'll give you like a solid three weeks okay. to order one. It's like 15 bucks on Amazon. And you should send me, you should send I'll me send a recommendation. I'll send you a recommendation. You and Brian explore, experiment, see what. Here's the thing. I'm really quick. Like I can, I'm quick. You'll probably be even quicker. Than that's me. what I'm worried about. Like that's, I don't need to be any quicker. Like, but what if it's like a stronger orgasm that you'd never even realize? I'm sure it could be, it could be. Um, but I, my orgasms get so strong that like, I literally have aftershocks for like three <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And he's just like laughing. Do you ever have one? And like, I'm like, don't move, like, don't, move, don't, like, move like, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Like, do you ever feel it where like your like hands or like lips get numb after? Oh yeah, like that's a weird feeling. Oh yeah, numb. Like sometimes like, if tingling. I'm, I'll, sometimes I'll cry. That's not common, but it definitely has happened. A release. Yeah. Oh, sometimes you just need it. I mean, you all not to go it. from like sex to my dad right away, but oh, I my favorite. <laughs> I had some really bad like neck pain. I had neck pain a right couple now. months ago. It's happening right now. Just want to tell you. It's not but I'm fun too afraid of him. To be <laughs> to be in pain, it's so consuming and overwhelming, mm -hmm. just like taints your whole day. Yes. So I went to my dad, who's a chiropractor, and he did this one move where I'm laying on the table and he like <clears throat> pulls it straight out oh and it was such God. a huge release that I instantly started crying. Yeah. I like had no control over it. And I was Aww. like, Oh my gosh, I feel like crying and he's like, Good cry and I was like, Why am I crying? He's like because you had like so much you've been like holding up yeah. your body like literally oh, I totally needed to release know that it. <sighs> anyway, I will go see him. I recommend it. it. Scares me honestly. Like even watching you do that scared me. Don't be scared. I will say I did have um, really bad. If you bad need him to rub pain. your boobs at first to really? get you get relaxed, he can do that for That's you. Oh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just close my eyes. Like, Doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> Um, get on it. Um, I was at a, a I went to a physical therapist because I was afraid of the chiropractor mm. and he snuck some chiropracticianist stuff in there. And when he did it, it literally, I was like, oh, I guess I'm good. So I know, I know it's real. I know. I know. Yes. Take care of your body, man. Otherwise you're going to be old and in pain and it's a lot harder to fix than at 40 and in pain. Well, that's true. At 40. 36 will probably get, like, feel better faster. 36, but. like, your body just works so much better. <gasps> okay. Wait, 41 in a few weeks, by the way. I know! The 22nd. That's right. August 22nd. That's right. When you texted me, so we did a Peloton ride on Michelle's birthday morning. It was early. Maybe it wasn't that early, but it felt early to me. I was still in bed. And I like literally, I was like not awake. You're like, want to do a thing? Oh, because I, I was on Instagram mm -hmm. and a person we follow, Rebecca Wolf, Girls Gone Child, has been, I mean, we've been reading her shit for over, over a, a decade. decade. And she wrote a book. And so we're going to go see her. Um, but anyway, I've never been to a book reading before. And I'm so excited. She's coming to San Diego. And yeah, I don't know if I have. You do. You just. Are you supposed I'm to read excited. the book prior, or is it no. she reads the thing and we buy the book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then she signs it. You know. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm so excited. Like, oh, yeah. Can't wait. Anyway, so I was saying we need to go to this, and then she's like, "Get on Peloton with me." It had been like months, and I was like, um, "Okay," and I so I, I had like eight minutes to get. Yeah, ready. I was like, "It's a live class. It starts at right. nine a.m. You have eight Let's minutes. Go. Let's do this." And so I had to find all the stuff to get it because I hadn't used it in a long time. 
And then, so we do the whole ride. I'm like, great, thanks. And then afterwards, I look at my phone. I'm like, today's the 23rd. I'm like, oh my God, it's your birthday. I, I like literally didn't even, I didn't know what day it was. I That's how you knew not from my posts on Instagram? No, I know. Well, see, that makes me feel better that you remembered by like oh. looking at the date. Absolutely. I even told someone like the week before, I'm like, oh, Michelle's birthday is on Saturday. <laughs> birthday ride I didn't get a shout out live on the class but I did get a dm from today saying dude that's worth it and I was like oh my god have you ever had a shout out on a live ride no but you have I have how did we so was it, your... it was my hundredth ride and it was with my girl Emma who's my favorite 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 mm -hmm. and I got in class like a little bit early so I think that's probably why I got it because it was it, like she was scroll she was like getting ready to start uh. she was she's like oh yay Vicky Christine da -da -da. I was like <gasps> okay and I think that's rare to be called out on your hundredth ride because people are like, like eight thousand now. <laughs> Congrats on your 8,000. All right, 7,500. I'm like, I'm never going to get there. You You're will. never going to call my name. <laughs> <laughs> Don't exciting, never though. say never. I mean. You don't know. You've got a yeah. DM. Okay, I have a topic, something that happened this weekend, and I wanted to talk to you about it. And it's not that one. Dish it. But uh, I went to lunch with my family, and my niece was there. Melody. Melody. And my niece is like so cool. She like She's has so half cool. the side of her hair like shaved here because she wants to do that. She wears one earring. She's so cool that when I see her, and I just ran into her the other day at parkour, I was like, hi, Melody. Remember me? <laughs> hi, Vicky. <laughs> and she's like, hi. I was like, oh, hi. Okay. Like, she's just, like, exudes confidence. She's always, always just, she wears what she wants. She, she's just wonderful. And I tell mm -hmm. her how awesome she is all the time. So I, was talking to her and she's like, yeah, I think I'm going to grow my hair out. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. How long are you going to grow it? And she's like, I don't know, however long my friends want it. And I was like, hmm, I think you should grow it out if you want to grow it out. And if you want it to your ankles, awesome. If you want to shave your head off, great. But it should be your choice because you have awesome, like you make awesome choices. And she's nine, right? She's nine. She's nine years old. Yeah. Um, and so her dad, my brother, overheard this conversation and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I was like, what? And he goes, coming from someone who is like, what, how did he word it? Privileged and like cares about her appearance and knows what it means to have the social pressure of, of looking good to your friends and to society. And, and I was like, no, even more so because I am so affected by what other people think and I want, and I didn't hear this growing up, I'm hoping that I can instill this confidence when she's nine to do what she wants and that it doesn't matter Absolutely. what other people think about her hair and blah, 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 blah. And he goes, well, and he just keeps saying like, well, and I'm he like, just wants to hate on you. I don't understand. That makes no sense. He's just like a contrarian. He just wants mm. to like, those are fun. He, I think his point was, you can say that all you want of like, but you're showing shave your head. And right. yeah, he goes, but you would never shave your head. And I was like, I don't want to. No, but I don't want to. <laughs> and if I did want to, I hope that I have the confidence to do so. Yeah. And maybe I don't have the confidence because no one told me at nine years old. Yeah. I was just going to say, fucking we do it. came from a different time. Like our mothers came from a way different time and we came from a different time than these girls. Yeah. All I remember growing Boys up too. was all of my parents and their friends. You're so, you're pretty. so pretty. Oh my she's God. You're so, so pretty. pretty. She's so pretty. That's she's so pretty. All she's they cared so about. Pretty. She's so pretty. That's what I felt I needed to be Absolutely. then all the time. So I was like, Melody, you're so cool. You're so smart. I'm breaking so the cycle. Confident. I'm trying to, mm -hmm. but when her own father is not backing me up, and she hears his voice, and then there was a yours. there was a family friend there as well too, and she goes, yeah, and she goes, and Melody, your face is so pretty. Oh my you god, you can pull off any head. hairstyle, and I wanted to be like, you're not getting it. I don't care what her face looks like. Yeah, we're on an island sometimes. I know. It's like nobody, nobody else. Okay. It's no wonder. It's just sometimes it hits me how much other people don't think the same way a all lot. The, all the time. I literally, I'll like say something in social circles and then everyone just looks at me like, I mean, we've experienced this together where someone looks at me like I'm absolutely crazy and then I'm like, oh, this is, this is <laughs> it for the day. <laughs> oh, 
Christ. I'm alone. But um, I wonder if it's because, so she just cut her hair because her hair was longer before. Mm -hmm. I actually I, cut it for her. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, your hair, I'm like, you cut your hair. It looks really nice. I just was like yeah. commenting on it. And um, and her hair is still shaved and it's cool. And mm -hmm. I wonder if it's from, I wonder if it was a reaction to that from her friends. Like, where would that even Maybe. come Where would that even come from? Because hers used to be really long, like, down to her waist. Mm -hmm. But it was always, like, so knotted and ratted. So I'd either be like, do you want to brush your hair? Or, like, do you want me to cut your hair today? Should we brush that? Um, and yeah. so one day, and Melanie's not going to do something she doesn't want to do. So she's like, nope, I like it long. I'm like, cool, well, that's, that's cool. And then one day she's like, okay, I want you to cut my hair. And I'm like, yeah? And I cut it without even asking her mom. <laughs> oh, shit, what'd she say? Well, she's like, I don't care. It's my hair at the yeah. time and uh, I was like that's true it is your hair and she's like plus it'll grow back I don't like it and I was like you are so amazing smart. <laughs> and I was like all right here we go Boop. so I like I am not a hairstylist by any I thought it looked great I think her, I think my brother fixed it up at the, at the... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah anyway um she's like put blue in her hair yeah. when I saw yeah, she's her cool. it's great I just I want her to always have that confidence and I know how hard it is going to be in her teen years with peers and well it's not even her peers right it's her family and it's our family like i mean I, I know that too we grew up with that like even with my kids cutting their hair i cut my boy's hair more because my mom says that they need to have their hair cut than i think so mm -hmm. like i think their hair looks fine i like i like messy hair mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. and every time i she's like oh you're gonna you're gonna get a haircut soon and i'm like mm -hmm. okay it is it yeah. just gets in there uh-huh and then like I think our, our, like, people don't even mean to. No. But, like, my mother, for example, she comes over, Rome, West, oh, so good to see you, da da, da. And then Shay, oh, Shay, your dress is so pretty. I love, you look so pretty. And, like, part of me is thinking, I mean, sure, it doesn't hurt to hear if you look nice. No. Everyone wants to have a compliment, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe not everyone, maybe it's just me. But <laughs> no, no, I think everyone. I mean, it doesn't hurt. However, then I feel extra want to say like, you're so smart, you're so funny, yeah. you're so confident, yeah. you're strong. Yeah. But it's then I, I mean, I also say it like, I love your hair. I think your hair is so pretty. Oh, you know? I'm, obs I'm obsessed with hair. Everybody's hair. I mean, we have eyeballs. Humans are going to see each other. Humans compare they just they there are things that visually please people's eyes and things that don't I just think we have I think one way to kind of work towards at least impairing it uh, improving it a little is if we ha I know that we all have these like positive thoughts about people and they're like kind of quick and they come in and they go out like learning to say those things so mm -hmm. like if you know and that applies to boys and girls mm -hmm. right so like if they do something and you're like, God, that was, that was really cool. Like you say to Melody, like, you're really cool. That's really cool that you just said that. Those things can stick too. You yes. don't know what's going to stick, but just if it's positive and it's right. encouraging, just say it. Right. And it doesn't have to be about what they're wearing or what their hair looks like. And if it is, great, fine. Right. Um, but yeah, it could just be anything like, hey, great job doing this. Right. I really like the way you answered that question. I yeah. like how you asked a question. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, and it's easy to do with your own kids because you're trying to teach them manners and, you're with and them like all the time. right, you're with them all the time. Like, <laughs> great job calming your body down. Wonderful man. You ask that in a really wonderful way. Like yeah. you, you, it kind of becomes second nature with your kids. But I yeah. think going the extra mile, like saying it to a coworker, absolutely. Saying it or to, your even husband, to a stranger. To like a stranger. I will. There will be strangers that I'm like, I freaking love your outfit or your hair is amazing. You know, mm -hmm. and it feels kind of creeper sometimes to go up to someone and yeah. be like. Sorry, I know I don't know you, but like I'm obsessed with your outfit. Yeah. But then they're always like, thanks. Right, because they get how so happy. Yes. And how good did it feel to you when you had that stranger say something to you? You know, it's like, yeah. oh, I don't even know I would when be. When that happens happy. one day, I will be so happy. Yes. It's okay. like, thank you. Okay. <laughs> if that ever happens. If that ever happens. No. <sighs> so, anyway. Yeah. Keep, keep saying what you're saying, regardless of what her dad says. Right. I mean, she's also someone that like she's nine and she wants to wear board shorts and no top she's when super she swims. Forty. Oh, God, yeah. I so wish. at the pool and like we all great. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. They're starting there may to... come a day when her boobs are showing. You know, it's no longer just a chest. It's like boobs. When it's like, I'm fine with that. Isn't it so awful that we can't yes. do that just because they're bigger? 
Yes. Like just because they're fattier? Right. Just because I have fat on my Men body. Men can get breast cancer too, okay? Okay. So, we're all the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. So, I don't um, know. Can I tell you something that I did for talking about sexism a little bit? Mm -hmm. And I, I was sexist. Mm. Tell me more. <laughs> so, I was on a trip to the East Coast to visit family and I, when you hang out with other people who hang out with other people, you meet a lot of new people because mm -hmm. you kind of just go into their lives, right? So mm -hmm. you go to their games and you go to their events and you need to go to their parks. And I was at a 4th of July event at a park and there were tons of people around that I didn't know and they're introducing me to all these people and I was like, yeah, hi. A couple comes up and uh, my sister-in-law is like, oh, this is, this is my friend. This is my friend. This is who I was. T I wanted to tell her. I meant to tell you guys. She says she's. It's general. She hasn't picked out any person. It's a husband and a wife mm -hmm. and three kids. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to tell you um, that my my brother Brian, my husband, works. Uh, used to work with ophthalmologists, and I and immediately out of my mouth says. So there's a husband and a wife, and I said, "Oh, um, is your husband an ophthalmologist?" Instead of it was you. her. It was her. And, and then she goes, oh, no, I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. Lauren, my sister-in-law said, oh, she's, she's the ophthalmologist. And that woman never made eye contact with me or looked at me again, which fair, like 1000% fair. Were you tempted to say, I'm an asshole. I'm so sorry. Like that... it was so quick and there was so much chaos that I, I didn't really have. It was a... just more like an awkward, like move on from that. Yeah. And they weren't the only people. It was like a whole bunch of people everywhere. So it wasn't like we weren't sitting at a dining table or anything, mm -hmm. but it, it was like in my brain, like it all happened so fast, right? All your thoughts, like all your like sequence mm -hmm. of thoughts. And so I, I knew even as it was coming out of my mouth that that was not what I wanted to say, mm. but it just came out of my mouth. And there's so much unlearning that we have to do. Yeah, I didn't like that. I, I know, that. but so you know I what? I apologize for doing that. Hey, if you're listening, mm -hmm. what's her name? I don't know. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did was I sexist, I didn't even take the time to get to know her name. She didn't look at me, so you know, whatever. Oh. And and I, I, yeah, I don't know. Well, hey. But sometimes I just wanted to to say that out loud because I hate those moments where I make these like just faux pas. Foot in mouth like, yeah. moments. I like, know. What? And it's like, why I never I would be like I like a feminist. Right. Sticking up for the person. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, is your husband a doctor? <laughs> oh, so cute. No housewife? I'm the doctor. Yeah. I anyway. Know. Oh, oh. That makes me think of something else that I want to say out loud. Yes, please. So I can just get it off my chest. So there's this funny thing. I'm that like, I, did I, I do something? No, it's me. It's not you. Oh, okay. I know. That scares me too, but it's not you. You're there. It involves you. That's why I'm telling oh, you. Oh, okay. But so every, so you know how like you do, you say, you say things like this story and you never talk about them and then like, but every now and then they just pop in your head mm -hmm. and you just remember and you're like, God, what an idiot I was, right? So I have this one and it involves you and Werner. Oh, yeah. I kind of do too. Go ahead. Oh, fun. That just sparked a memory. Oh, Go cool. ahead. Of me doing it? Of me saying something to you that wasn't necessarily oh. my truth, but I said it. Oh, I have no... Okay, so yeah. mine... I mean, it's, it's so stupid, but I swear to God, please tell me if you if you remember this okay. and if you guys laugh at me about it. Okay? <laughs> because, okay. okay, so this was so long ago. It was when I first started doing BBG, which is like a really hard Beach workout. Beach body... don't know. Beach body guide? I think so. Okay. So fucking hard. And I never worked out in my life. And so I was like noticing all of these changes in my body. And one of them was like legit. My butt went from like normal to like bubble butt. It was mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. And because Werner at the time was a personal trainer and he had just started, he was thinking of doing a similar thing. Right. Remember? Creating like a guide. Creating uh -huh. a guide. Um, I was at your house and there were a bunch of us. It was like a bunch of our friends, a lot of people there. And I was like, you guys, I love this. Like my butt is like so perky now. And I literally like stuck my butt in front of Werner basically. And was like, look, look, look at my butt. Like it like totally looks different. And I thought to myself after like, why am I showing Werner my butt? I don't know. Cause why not? You're proud of it. And he's a but personal it, trainer. But it was because he was in my brain. It was because he was a trainer and yeah. it, like he felt like relevant to his business. Yeah. But in retrospect, it feels like, why is Vicky showing my husband her butt? <laughs> or all the friends being like, why is this bitch being like, no. look at my, look at my butt. Like, no one at all. First of all, that's not me. Never talked about it again. Okay. Well, second of all, you should be proud of your butt. And third of all, I've 
you could show him your butt anytime thank you like. Thank you, thank He you. likes butts. Thanks. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so that's, I that's think about funny. that every now and then it'll pop in my head and I'm like, why, why did I do that? I know. I do. There's, yes, you'll have these moments for years and years. <laughs> so Cause that had to have been like mm, many six years ago, seven no. years ago. No, no, more than that. Eight years ago. A long ass yeah, time ago. Long, long time ago. Yes. That no one else remembers but you. Yeah, I know. But and, I'm a, but I'm you'll a, probably still, I mean, maybe now, now I, I won't. Your no, chest. now I won't. Because there's another one that I did that I was someone else and I told them her reaction was not as nice as yours. <laughs> she was like, bitch. She said, she goes, girl, that sounds like a personal problem. And like, you should let go of that. And I was like, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we're not, we're not friends really. She and I, but. Um, I mean, sometimes I wonder if I've made the, um, <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal comment one too many times about your husband that it's like, okay, Michelle, we get it. You think he's no. attractive. <laughs> no, I've never thought that. My only thought with that is like, I don't see it. I don't, really? I really don't. Well, now that he, the hairier he gets, the less I, <laughs> but when he's like clean, I think Vicky's husband reminds me so much of Jake Gyllenhaal. And then when I see Jake Gyllenhaal, you I think of I correlate. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. And then I, I've mentioned it. Definitely many times. No, I'll just tell you right now. I never tire of anybody. So okay. My husband's hot. <laughs> I don't either. Never. It's a compliment. Dude. And I like, I agree. Tell me as many times as you right? want because I know, girl. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you give me permission to continue. Anytime. Okay. Thank you. Vernon is sexy. Uh, Which I just just not I know, I know. Like, I love your stories where you'll be like filming a kid just, and then you're like, whoa, husband. <laughs> And I'm like, out. yeah, I did see him back there without his shirt on. I know. Verna's like, okay, you've been doing a lot of, like, posts with it. me with my shirt. I'm like, I know. I'm like, he you loves know what? It. You love it. You don't pretend really That's why you work out. Right? We know. Shoot. Mm -hmm. um, no, the one thing, mine's not funny, but the one thing that pops <laughs> up when I think of those moments, yeah, um, which I actually thought of on the car right over here, oh, funny. was it was during a podcast, and I had Rome and West and I was pregnant with Bo who mm -hmm. I did not know if was a boy or a girl at the time mm -hmm. and when I found out he was a boy um pre any like medical conditions we thought this was a healthy pregnancy we would be having this child mm -hmm. um and we found out it was a boy I made a comment to you while we were recording I think saying like I'm actually relieved it's a boy because you know, if I had a girl, I just feel like it would be too much pressure. Like, how am I supposed to raise a girl in this society? And like, I'm actually really relieved that it's a boy. No, <laughs> I was fucking lying. Liar! I was a liar. Oh, okay. Because I so badly wanted a girl. Well, because we're girls. And I would it. never ever like <laughs> say, I obviously wanted my child. If it's a boy, there's no control over that. You're no. going to be happy with three boys. I would have been a, a boy mom. I would have wonderful but there would always be a part of me that was like oh well, like i know that i've always wanted a daughter and also like, i wish i could buy cute clothes yeah i wish I, I could buy cute right and so when i had accepted that like well i guess I'm, it's not in the cards to have a girl i had to like mourn that a little even bit. though i will point out that you were still willing to maybe talk about a fourth was i yes i thought i was 100 percent not and Werner wanted a fourth oh maybe it was that but I could have blacked it out. I could have blacked it out. I feel like there was, like, it wasn't a done deal. The, the sh closing of the shop. Maybe at that point it wasn't for yeah. me. And then when I went through the loss of him and then trying yeah. to get pregnant and then getting pregnant and then being so over being pregnant and then actually having a girl. And then I was like, I'm so done. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're done. You're done. A lot of things happen in between there. Yes. But I just... Yeah, I have to get off my chest that I was not being truthful. And I think this happens a lot when you yeah. have society has such like a say on if you have a boy, oh, you're going to try for a girl. Mm. If you have a girl, you can try for a boy. If you have two boys, oh, you're going to try for your girl. If you have two, you know, and, it's, oh, and then no. if you have three boys, it's like, are you, it's, it's like, it's like the goal is to have one of each or else you're missing out. I know. But, and it's so specific to like, our culture right because like there are other cultures where like i mean this is old but right like don't have a girl girls can't do shit have a boy what are you right. doing you know you have, have all the boys, boys. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throw away the girls right so i mean i guess it's we've come a long way that's good that we actually we want have girls like this have. but um but no, i was talking, I, get it. I went to lunch with my friend the other day and she has uh two boys 
and she's we were saying like it's almost like you have to defend your future unborn child like mm. you're not even pregnant with this third yet mm. and yet so many people have opinions on what this third should be as if you have any control sometimes i feel like people just say it to have something to say like um my sister-in-law was my other one she just had a baby and it's um she ended up having a girl and mm -hmm. she didn't know what she was gonna have she has a boy already and um she was telling me how like there was a I said to her, or maybe she told me, but someone had said, like, oh, so are you going to try for a third? Right? She's still pregnant with the second. Mm -hmm. Like, but mm -hmm. it's like, so when are you going to have the third? Or, like, do you think you'll do that again? Or whatever. And I, I kind of understand that impulse because, like, you're watching it. It's happening. Mm -hmm. It feels very, like, this, you know, you're in it. Do you want to do this again? But it's, as the pregnant person, you're like, can we not? I'm, can, yeah, can we not? I'm still so in the midst of this right, right now how would i ever know what right. i'm going to do in the future right if i'm going to want to so i think it's it's a combination of like that person's reality just observing with no stakes and sure. then more real like in it like can You're, we not right your own true experience yeah and i'll be walking with my three kids and I'll get comments from complete strangers Ooh, like, all three. You got, or they'll say, you got your girl. Oh God. They'll really? say, you got your girl. Stop. And part of wants to be like, do you know what I had to go through to quote unquote, get my girl? Right. I know. I think the rule should be like, we just don't talk about reproduction. Or just say like, cute family. You're, yeah. Have a great day. Cute family. Or like, you're doing great. When I, when I have like older friends. Older couples be like, I remember those days. I like that's, that's nice. nice. That's it's nice. nice to know, like, oh, okay, I'm not alone in the madness of like small children. Right. You know, that's nice to comment on. Fine, but to I don't know. It's just like, have you never had a miscarriage or have you never like had any? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think. Yeah, I don't know. And that's in that case, I don't know. Because I was gonna say maybe they haven't, but I feel like a lot of people have. I mean, I, I guess if it's one in four. Then seventy five percent have not. Is it one in four? I thought it was more than that. It probably is more than we that. We wouldn't know, though. Yeah, right. like, I, I don't know if I've ever had a miscarriage. I could have. You could have. I've had some pretty heavy periods. Yeah. I you mean, know? when I had that, like, chemical miscarriage, it was definitely, like, a heavier yeah. thing. And if I had never even tested, I probably... It was only one week late. Well, and I've always had really, really bad cramps to the point where, like, I literally am, like, in bed throwing up like pain like just horribly pain and, and so it could yeah it would be similar Very like, i wouldn't so. know yeah so anyway so yeah it could definitely be more than that it's just part of life which speaking of expelling mm. stuff i was also talking to uh, my father-in-law and his girlfriend about abortion because she ran i i don't really know her she's kind of new and she was so talkative and she was like um, oh, well, I worked for Planned Parenthood for like 60 years or not really, but whatever, <laughs> however many years you worked for someone, 35 years, whatever, you know, whatever. She's <laughs> like, how old is this girlfriend? Yeah, she's 110. <laughs> I founded Planned Parenthood. Did you know? Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, that's really awesome. That's a cool job. I've always thought like, that would be a really cool place to work or volunteer or something. Um, and then, so we kind of got on the topic and she's like, oh, I just can't believe what's happening. And they live in Vermont. And apparently in Vermont recently, a uh, bill was proposed to allow abortion, um, at any time. Right. So just like anytime you want to do it, any, any abortion is legal anywhere, anyhow, da, 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 right. And so his dad was like, which, you know, we, that's going way too far in the other way. Of course I think abortion should be legal, but that's going way too far in the other direction. And I said, why? And I don't think it is. Sounds like my brother. Right. And we should talk about that too. And I was like, well, no, I, I think that women should be allowed to do whatever they want. And he's like, so you think someone should be allowed to like abort their child at, you know, a, a week before they're due? I'm like, well, no one would do that. But I guess if she wanted to, then we'll have to, she'll talk to her doctor about that. Like, that's none of my business. And he's like, no, no that's ridiculous. I'm like, but I think the point that Vermont is trying to make here is that it should be allowed whenever because there should, should be no law about this. Right. right. Like, this is about trusting women to make their decisions by themselves with their families and their doctors and their, it's God their or who own they fucking are. body. That is the whole, like the fact that there are laws about it at all is literally just like, hi, we don't trust women yeah. to make decisions for themselves. Yeah. Period. Period. So that I'm like, that's what that law is trying to tell us that like, yeah, it can't have happen, happen whenever because Oh, we don't need to know about it because it's not our business. Yeah, but then you get my brother being like, 
I couldn't imagine someone you know, killing baby Shay. And I go, because <laughs> she's Shay who's two years old. And so he goes, okay, well, where, where can we draw the line? What is okay then to abort? At what point is the fetus okay to abort? You don't need to worry about it, homie. You don't need to worry about it because it is you'll ne because if you have to deal that with that with your spouse, you guys do what you got to do. Make your choice. I'm not going to come in and be like, "Oh gosh, I don't know how many weeks are you?" Hmm. Uh, it's can not I see the my chart? Me. What part is developed and what isn't at this week? Oh god, do we like fingers more than toes cuz you know, they don't have hair yet. And they don't have a nose yet, but gosh, I don't know, they like those fingers. I mean, right, it just it makes no sense. And, and let okay. He's concerned about these babies that are five minutes from being born mm -hmm. and they're being murdered. It's not happening. And I was like, first of all, that's not happening. No, no one's doing that. It's not happening. No one's doing that. That's but not a real say, thing. Let's say that was, okay? That 0.001% chance that that's happening somewhere. Because he goes, oh, you haven't seen the videos? Oh, I haven't. I'm like, send, send me the videos. What's, what is, where is that happening? Let's say that was. That is not enough reason to do a blanket no. law no. against women's choices with their own bodies. Right, right. That's right. That's right. And I was like, period. It's like, period. It's like some men are rapists. No men should be able to have sex. Right. We cannot trust men to have sex because some rape. That is a great analogy. I just came up with it. That's a real thing. <laughs> that is a great analogy. <laughs> oh, and then, and then um, his dad also said, well, it's like, what? So then why should we even have um, a speed limit? You should just drive whatever speed limit. I'm like, that is not the same <laughs> at all. That analogy sucks. A speed limit is to protect the community. Not, this is not your community. That's not your community. The and then he body. goes, there's plenty of families who would take no, they're not. this child. I go, really? Have you seen our foster system? And he yeah. goes, well, yeah. I mean, that's a whole separate issue. I go, no, it's actually, these, exact, it's actually very it's related. It's all related. It's related. You <laughs> force these women to have babies who are not capable or want to have these babies. Where are these babies going? Because they're not going in your home. Yeah. Have you ever adopted a baby? You going to do that? Mm -mm, no. Not. No. And then he's like, you have all these states like California, you can just abort a baby at any time. And I go, no, you can't. Hi, I had to abort mine at 22 we weeks because if I made it at 23, we would have had an issue. And he goes, oh, well, I didn't know that. And I go, exactly. So, so shut, shut the fuck up. up. Shut the fuck yeah. up. <laughs> shut it. Well, he's like, well, now, you know, I'm like, so do some, like, don't just read these little weird articles and take it as truth. Like, Let's uh, also mind your business. Mind your fucking business. Get out. You want to go save some children? Save the ones that are actually My humans God. and have a birth certificate. Yeah, we've got some kids for you, you to save. Don't worry. If you're feeling altruistic and you're like, gosh, I'm just so worried about babies. You know what? There's lots of babies that you could help. Money, adoption, education. There's so Don't many worry ways. about the one in my uterus. Oh, it makes no sense. It really makes no sense. Really, which brings us back to what we said last week. It's all about controlling women and controlling race, which, you know, maybe he should talk about that. Right? But mm -hmm. in his mind, like, he genuinely has not researched the thing enough. Well, <laughs> he genuinely feels that there's got to be a line. He goes, fine, up until what week then? Is it's, it okay? I think it's only because he has not been presented with these other ideas that we should continue to talk about. Yes. Right? Because it's all about, like, like we were saying last week, like, saying the word abortion casually, like, it's not a bad word, is part of destigmatizing the culture where, like, the things that he's saying he thinks are, like, common sense, duh. But actually, no, that is fully, like intentionally ingrained in him by you know decades of religion religion and, I was that was my yeah. next point is I think it's really really hard for people who genuinely believe there's a god mm -hmm. who genuinely believe there's a god with a plan um it's really hard for these people to accept any reason why we wouldn't have this baby be born 
Yeah, I mean, that, that, that leave it sense. up to God's. Because then someone else posted on Facebook, which I know we yeah. all know how much Vicky hates Facebook. I, but she posted, she's like, you know, everything's in God's plan. I just, I cannot, will not ever support abortion. Then why do anything? <laughs> if everything's in God's plan, why even get out of bed in the morning? Why make any decision? Why choose toast over a bagel? God's going to tell you. God will Don't tell think you. about it. Makes it's sense. very convenient to use religion as a reason when you want to. Yeah, because you can't talk to God. You don't actually get to check and see if you're right. Anyway, by the way, mm. my children are in camp right now. Hopefully my mom picked them up. And <laughs> Barb? I'm sure she did. And um, they were sitting with a little girl when I picked them up yesterday. And I'm like, oh, who's that little friend you made? And they told me her name, and then they go, yeah. And I said, oh, what? tell me something about her. She goes, well, she likes something, and she's a Christian. <laughs> she's a Christian? Oh, she told you she was a Christian. He's like, yeah, that's what she told me. And I was like, oh, well, what'd you tell her about your situation? He's like, I oh, don't well, say anything, because he's a boy, he doesn't say anything. But <laughs> yeah, I, I was know. like, well, just for the record, mom and dad are atheists, and you can just let her know. That that's yeah. Okay. <laughs> Atheist, much like abortion, should be a word that we use without stigma. It's true. I'm just you know, say that. for as much as people love to talk about their religion, then people who don't have a religion should absolutely be able to talk about that too. I know, but the thing is, is that since we don't have a religion, um, we don't we don't care as much. <laughs> so it does feel odd to constantly That's be like, true. "Don't believe in God." That's don't true. Don't believe in God because it's like, yeah, but it's like it's like. Don't believe in aliens. Hi, I'm Vicky. I don't believe in aliens. <laughs> Even though maybe I do. Maybe. I mean, I'm not opposed to believing that there's other life forms out there. There's no way that we're so special that n something else couldn't exist out there. I completely agree. Right? Oh, absolutely. Like, what? No. Like, we're just some weird evolving organism. Tune in next time Cute. for our talk on <laughs> aliens. <laughs> All right. I think we should bring back things we're loving. I know. Well, when I wrote the thing, I, should, I was like, I was like, oh, we used to do that. Um, I think the plumber's going to come, just FYI. Yeah. Okay. Um, think fast. Uh, things are loving. Things are loving. Do you have one? I do. Okay. I just finished a book called The Golden Couple, and um, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I finished it in like three days. Oh, good. Yeah. I just read the book Maid. Did you read Maid? M-A-I-D? Yeah. Like, um, she's I read like, Housemaid. Oh, no. I'm surprised you didn't read this because it's like really popular. I feel like you're really good at reading popular books, but... Um, I think it's on my to read. It was fine. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, I think he might wait for my, the other guy to come. Um, things I'm loving. Gosh, uh, I'm loving uh, getting my house together. I don't know, I can't think of anything. I'm sorry, guys. She's loving boob massages and mammograms. So. You know what I'm loving? I'm lo I have a cat, I have a cat. She's somewhere, don't ask me where. Okay. She's not friendly. <laughs> She's a bitch. Big ol' cat bitch. Are you happy you got her, though? So, <laughs> um... I wanted her to be cooler. I mean, in your head, that's the... That's you why think I'm it's gonna to be dog. cool. You build it up not. to this, like, movie... Cuddle. Animal. So and cute. then in reality, it's not that. In, that's... in reality, it's a cat following you around all day going... <laughs> 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 the plumber. I'm Vicky. I will be right out. She's back. I have a leak in the garage and it's coming from the pipes in the ceiling and it doesn't stop. And so I called them and they're here. I hope you're not paying for it. I'm not. Good. I'm renting. Perks to renting. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, having a cat is not what it's, well, it can not, it, it's not ideal really, but um, I just got her to start using her litter box in the garage so that I don't have to smell the poop oh, right away. And good. that makes me happy. It's not there really a recommendation. Litter boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the golden couple book and litter boxes. Oh, which reminds me, actually, I do, I do have a preferred litter stuff. What's that called? The sand. I don't know oh. what it's called. Um, if you are like curious. Catness? No, no, it's like the, 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 like that the stuff they poop in. Yeah, because I'm using one right now that you can like flush and I don't love it. Oh. And I love the one I had before. I'm like, okay, I'll just write down. Do you just dump it in the trash can? 
Yeah, you just put it in like a bag and then you put it in the trash can. What if you didn't put it in the bag and you just put it in the trash can? Well, I mean, I guess you could carry the box over. Oh, you mean like to a little trash can? Yeah. It's, I don't know. I think it would smell pretty bad. Okay. And then you have to take out the big trash all the time. Unless you're like walking the box over to the big trash, which you're not. Oh, because it's like a pretty sizable box. Yeah, and it's heavy because it's full of sand. Gotcha. I've never had a cat, so. Mm. Hey, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, we'd love to hear feedback. We'd love to hear questions. We'd love to hear um, topics you'd like discussed. Yeah, I think maybe we should bring the voicemail back. Do people do that? Oh, we used to have a voicemail. We did. Um, or the umcast at gmail is our is our email. So you feel That's free right. to do that. Or obviously social media. You can talk yeah. to people. That's how people talk. Follow nowadays. us on Instagram. Send us a DM. Um, we're going to post little clips throughout the week. And we love you. We love you. Bye. Bye.